<laughs> Woo. All right. From the top. Hey, it's number one best-selling author and motivational speaker, Eric Qualman. Thank you for joining us for today's seven super tips. Today's seven super tips are coming from the lady who's been nominated for more Academy Awards than anyone in history. She's also received medals at the White House and she succeeded even though she once slept through a law exam at Yale. Those are today's seven super tips from Meryl Streep. We're not gonna go back to the bad old days of ignorance and oppression and hiding who we are. Because we, we owe it to the, the people who have died for our rights and who have died before they even got their own. And we owe it to the pioneers of the LGBTQ movement, like Paula Grossman, and to the people on the front lines of all civil rights movements, not to let them down. I am the most overrated and most over... <laughs> over-decorated and currently, currently I am the most over-berated actress who likes football of my generation. But that's why you invited me here, right? Okay. The weight the weight of all my honors is part of what brings me here to the podium. It, it compels me. It's against every one of my natural instincts, which is to stay the fuck home. <laughs> It compels me to stand up in front of people and say words that haven't been written for me, but that come from my life, from my convictions, and that I have to stand by. Because it's hard to stand up. It's hard. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be here. I want to be home and I want to read and garden and load my dishwasher. I do. I love that. It's embarrassing and it's terrifying to put the target on your forehead and it sets you up for all sorts of attacks and armies of, of brown shirts and bots and worse. And, and the only way you can do it is to feel you have to, you have to, you don't have an option. You have to stand up, speak up, act up. An actor's only job is to enter the lives of people who are different from us and let you feel what that feels like. And there were many, many, many powerful performances this year that did exactly that. Breathtaking, compassionate work. But there was one performance this year that stunned me. It, it sank its hooks in my heart. Not because it was good. It was, there was nothing good about it. <laughs> but it was effective and it did its job. It made its intended audience laugh and show their teeth. It was that moment when the person asking to sit in the most respected seat in our country, imitated a disabled reporter, someone he outranked in privilege, power, and the capacity to fight back. It, it kind of broke my heart when I saw it, and I still can't get it out of my head because it wasn't in a movie. It was real life. And this instinct to humiliate, when it's modeled by someone in the public platform, by someone powerful. It filters down into everybody's life because it kind of gives permission for other people to do the same thing. 
Disrespect invites disrespect. Violence incites violence. When the powerful use their position to bully others, we all lose. Empathy is at the heart of the actor's art. And in high school, another form of acting took hold of me. I wanted to learn how to be appealing. So I studied the character I imagined I wanted to be, that of the generically pretty high school girl. I researched her deeply, that is to say, shallowly, in Vogue and Seventeen and Mademoiselle magazines. I tried to imitate her hair, her lipstick, her lashes, the clothes of the lissom, beautiful, generically appealing high school girls that I saw in those pages. I ate an apple a day, period. <laughs> I peroxided my hair, ironed it straight. I demanded brand name clothes. My mother shut me down on that one. But I did. I worked harder on this characterization, really, than any, anyone that I think I've ever done since. I worked on my giggle. I, I lightened it, because I liked it when it kind of went <laughs> at the end. <laughs> because I thought it sounded childlike and, and cute. This was all about appealing to boys and at the same time being accepted by the girls. It's a very tricky negotiation. Often success in one area precludes succeeding in the other. And along with all of my exterior choices, I worked on what, my, what actors call my interior adjustment. I adjusted my natural temperament, which tended, ten, tends to be <laughs> slightly bossy, a little opinionated, loud, a little loud, full of pronouncements and high spirits. And I willfully cultivated softness, agreeableness, uh, breezy, natural sort of sweetness, even a shyness, if you will, which was very, 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 very effective on the boys. But the girls didn't buy it. They didn't like me. They sniffed it out, the acting. And they were probably right, but I was I was committed. This was absolutely not a cynical exercise. This was a vestigial survival courtship skill I was developing. And I reached a point senior year when my adjustment felt like me. I, I had actually convinced myself that I was this person and she, me, pretty, talented, but not stuck up. You know, a girl who laughed a lot at every stupid thing every boy said, and who lowered her eyes at the right moment and deferred, who learned to defer when the boys took over the conversation. I really remember this so clearly. And I could tell it was working. I was much less annoying to the guys than I had been. They liked me better, and I liked that. This was conscious, but it was at the same time motivated and fully, fully felt. This was real, real acting. I got to Vassar, which 43 years ago was a single-sex institution, like all the colleges in what they called the Seven Sisters, the Female Ivy League. And I made some very quick but lifelong and challenging friends. And with their help, outside of any competition for boys, my brain woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I got up, and I got outside myself, and I, I found myself again. I didn't have to pretend. I could be goofy, vehement, aggressive, and slovenly, and open, and funny, and tough, and my friends let me. 
I didn't wash my hair for three weeks once. <laughs> they accepted me like the velveteen rabbit. I became real instead of an imaginary stuffed bunny. I don't know. I don't know. This, this was so fun and sort of effortless that it, it didn't, I think you, you learn more from the challenging things, the things that are tougher to do in, what was in the, the past. What was the toughest? Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> Sophie's Choice or? No, um, no, no, no. There have been tough things that I care, I probably won't go into, but um, just because, just because they, I, my molecules change in me according to how happy I am and whether and my creativity gets um, you know I, what I learn every time out is how to wrangle all the elements that make m me love what I do and make it sort of happen effortlessly and when it when that doesn't come easily I don't really have a bag of tricks to go to and no, or a method you know I don't so I come unmoored and part of that is a very good thing because you have to reassemble. I've thought a lot about the power of empathy. In my work it's the current that connects me and my actual pulse to a fictional character in a made-up story. It allows me to feel pretend feelings and sorrows and imagined pain. And my nervous system is sympathetically wired and it conducts that current to you sitting in a movie theater and to the woman sitting next to you and to her friend so that we all feel that it's happening to us at the same time. It's a very mysterious and valuable resource of the human species and women I think access it most effortlessly we cry at sad movies we don't feel we lose face or stature or position doing it we see a news story that enrages us and we write letters through tears our hearts pounding I've often I used to wonder why human beings developed these inconvenient and embarrassing responses, this sniffling, choking, wet obstruction. <laughs> you know, the thing that physicians and soldiers and stock traders and journalists and fashion models and politicians and news commentators and venture capitalists all must suppress in order to work most efficiently. <laughs> I thought, what possible value, function could it serve in the Darwinian scheme of, you know, survival of the fittest and the strongest and the most heavily armed? No, seriously, I thought, why and how did we evolve with this weak and useless passion intact within the deep heart's core? And the answer, as I've formulated it to myself, is that empathy is the engine that powers all the best in us. And whether being famous matters really one bit in the end, in the whole flux of time. I know I was invited here because of <laughs> how famous I am and how many awards I've won and and while I am, I am overweeningly proud of the work that I, believe me, did not do on my own. I can assure you that awards have very little bearing on my own personal happiness, my own sense of well-being and purpose in the world. That comes from studying the world feelingly with empathy in my work. It, it comes from staying alert and alive and involved in the lives of the people that I love and the people in the wider world who need my help. 
no matter what you see me or hear me saying, when I'm on your TV holding a statuette and spewing, that's acting. <laughs> Being a celebrity has taught me to hide but being an actor has opened my soul. I want to thank Chad and everybody at the Human Rights Campaign for this moving and very meaningful honor, which I dedicate to my gay and trans teachers, colleagues, mentors, directors, friends, all of whom should take the credit for me being up here because they taught me from a very young age and they continue to remind me every day of the very best lesson and that is to be yourself and love and take joy in your work and what you do. Those are today's seven super tips from Meryl Streep. Make sure you don't miss the next episode. Hit that subscribe button below. And until next time, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. She's also won the presidential award for being awesome. And not only that, I cannot get this right. And remember, 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 remember. Okay, let's do it again.